So now I gotta travel back through here. Now, luckily, leave me alone, <laughs> jeez louise. You are just a really angry, ugly dude, and your brother is over here just as angry and ugly as you are. Get away from me, you, you demonic pug bears. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Smoke and Sacrifice. I'm your host, the Birdman, known as Falcon. You're probably noticing I'm inside of a game when I usually start on the menu. I'm doing these one-shots. Uh, unfortunately, I took this game out for a spin to kind of get acquainted with it, but there's no way for me to start from the main menu. It automatically kicks me into my old save. So we'll start a new game here pretty soon because I want to kind of cover this from the start because there's a really cool story involved here. But at the same time, this gives you an idea of what the game looks like. It's essentially, to me, like an Odin Sphere or a Muramasa meets the gameplay of a Don't Starve, which is a really good combination. This game is um, available on Steam, Switch, and a couple of other consoles as well. So if you're looking for a good game to play on Switch, oh, oh don't shoot the quills at me. This is actually fairly good this far. So anyway, let me jump into the start here and we'll get the ball rolling. We can not fight those things as you're wondering, but it, let's just start from the start. Alrighty, so there's going to be a small little tutorial and story here. It'll take a while, so I'm hoping we get enough time in here to get to where I was at, which isn't really too far after the tutorial. But at the start of the tutorial, or at least this part of the game here, it's mostly very story-heavy, because even though the gameplay mechanics are similar to a Don't Starve, the farming and stuff like that that you'll do, killing enemies and farming for items to create stuff to craft down the line, um, there's a... unlike Don't Starve, there's actually like a legitimate story here to follow, so... This is kind of very important for that. Sachi, don't you hear the bells? It's time to finish for the day. Don't you want to see your son before his ritual time? Of course I do, but... That's the spirit. Go on, back to the village with you. I can't wait. So, um... This game I would kind of classify as like fantasy horror. They're not, it's not like, you know, spooky scary, but there's some really messed up things happening here. As you heard right now about the ritual with the sun thing, right? Well, I don't wanna, I'm not going to spoil anything for you. We'll just kind of figure it out here together. I'm not sure what this is, but if I leave this little small area here, I freeze completely. Our town seems to be powered by these, like, sun flared things or whatever. And I guess outside of the, the protection of these things, like, um, you freeze up. So we're, in a, we're living in a very weird post-apocalyptic world. But there's some sort of really weird shady business happening at the same time. Now, I think we're supposed to follow the cries of our son here. There you are, Sachi. Leo's just woken up. He's been good as gold all day, but he wants his mother now. He's waiting in the house. I'm sure you can hear. That I can. Entire, the entire town could probably hear this kid crying. Hi, right, Leo, shut up. I'm here. Your mom's here. <laughs> oh, he laughed too. He liked that joke about telling me to shut up. I'm, an ama I'm amazing with kids, let me tell you. There you are. Did you sleep well? Yes, you did. Oh, Leo. I know it's for the best, but I don't know how I'll do this. Do what? Oh. Oh. There, that's better, isn't it, little one? You wouldn't wail, so if you knew what joy awaits you tonight. Sachi, Father Telemec is waiting for you by the sun tree. The him right there, huh? Okay. Well, thankfully, it's very really nearby, so you didn't really have to tell me how to find him. It's... You know, just literally walking distance away. A couple of steps, really. I could, to I could toss a stone at him from my distance where I was at. Follow Telemac. Ah, you're ready to begin the ritual. Good. I will ask Father Smoturk to summon the congregation. Hmm, all this ritual talk. It's obviously something good's about to go down, huh? Nothing bad ever happens at these rituals. Trying to figure out, like, there's some sort of, like, culture, like, really culture-heavy to this game. I'm trying to figure out what it is, but I, I'm really terrible when it comes to culture. I don't even understand mine, to be honest with you. Okay, let's, uh, talk to you, I guess. Ready, Sachi? Very good. Then let us begin. Once more, we gather in the warmth of the sun tree. Once more, we honor him with the right of the firstborn. As his day fades once more into night, we beseech him. Hold us ever within your gaze, let it never flicker. Let our sacrifice be accepted and your blessings continue. Sachi, mother of a babe without name, present him in humility and gives him unto you with gratitude, devotion, and love. 
Sachi, when you are ready, please place the babe on the altar. Well, see, that's where you're wrong, because his name is apparently Leo, so, you know, he, he does have a name. That's already weird, all things considering, so just place him over here, huh? Okay. Well, it's the worst that could happen, happen with that sparkly device next to him. I'm so sorry, little one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Bunch of weird lightning bolts hitting him. The sacrifice was accepted. The sun cycle continues. Through the gift of this nameless child, we profess our fate. Great Sun Tree, long may your merciful blessing rest with us. They knew your name was Leo. Couldn't they have given you that much? Oh, okay, well. There we go, it wasn't a... An undersight by people. Alright, well, um... Don't mind me, I'm just gonna leave now after my World's Best Mother Award ceremony, probably somewhere around here. Psst, Sachi, over here. Now, it shouldn't be said, right? It shouldn't need to be said, but I believe that these sacrifices are supposed to keep these sun towers up and running for the village to continue in this frozen post apocalyptic world that we showed off earlier, right? So that's the reason why the sacrifice happens, or so that's what it looks like, you know, visually speaking. But there's always something more cryptic going on, right? But that's what it seems like thus far. It's being sacrificed for the greater good of what's left of humanity. Who are you? Why have I never seen you before? Never seen me? Huh. Well, I remember you quite well. Sa saw you up on your dad's shoulder when you were a little one. I've traded in this village for longer than you've lived, child. I just like to go traveling from time to time. Traveling? But there's nothing out there. How do you survive? The pugbears manage it, don't they? But that's besides the point. I've, s I've been away too long. Much has changed. Yet it always stays the same. Children grown, and another generation of them departed in sorrow. No, it's okay to cry, my dear. Named him, did you? Leo. I called him Leo. Not that they cared. Leo. It's a fine little name for a little one who will never grow up. Wow. Yeah, no need a reminder of that. There now. I'm not much for gift giving, but please take this pendant. It's precious, for it will light your way in the dark from time to time. Put your mother love into it, and remember your Leo by it. But hush, priests are coming. And that went smoothly. Smother thought she might make trouble. Never know how to react, eh? Do you think the boy would drive down there? He seemed a little sick. I hope so. We can't afford to lose, lose too many. Drive down there. You know, hell. But they're talking as if Leo's still... Huh? Where'd you go? Hey! Lay people may not linger on the temple grounds at night. They should be off home to bed. Please return to the village. Alright. Not even a thank you for, you know, keeping our village up and running, huh? Sacrificing your son. Seven years later. So we have quite a bit of a time jump here. Sachi, don't you hear the bells? It's time to finish for the day. It feels a little early, though. Have we done a full day already? Wait. What's going on? Uh-oh. What just happened? It was day and now it's night. Has the sun tree forsaken us? Well, that can't be good. Can't be good at all. Let's just, um, probably head home. Help! Sound the alarm! Pug bears are attacking the village! Pug bears? They must have noticed the sun tree failing. Sachi, have you seen Father Telemark? Or even Father Smolderk? Nobody knows where they are or what to do. Just try and get a defense organized. I'll see if I can find them. Surely they're in the temple, if anywhere. Avoid the pug bears and head northwest to the temple to look for the senior priest. Now this is, um, you won't be able to fight here just yet. It'll be mostly just kind of like stealth around. Um, we get to fight and defend ourselves once we um, go to the underground, which is where I, we start off the video at. But look at these pug bears. They literally look like pugs, their face do anyway. But they will mess up your day. And they're really like, just 
something about them is just really off, like the way they're kind of like made. So that's why I mentioned earlier how this game reminds me like more of a fantasy setting. Like it's obviously like a fantasy apocalypse in a sense, right? But some of the creatures and even some of the people you talk to in this game are just not right, I would say. Okay, we're good now. I, I did go uh, veered off a little bit too much to the right. So, ah, how you doing, buddy? Hello again, Sanchi. Long time no see. You again? You do like to turn up out of nowhere. Have you seen the senior priests? We're under attack. So I noticed. As usual, my timing is impeccable. To answer your question, the temple is empty. Not a priest in sight. A good time to poke your nose in, if you're curious of the sort. You may not find assistance, but you might uncover a secret or two, huh? But if they're not in the temple, then where are they? Ah, now that is the question, isn't it? You know, the right of the firstborn is not all it seems. Today, finally, your chance has come to discover more. Perhaps it's time it's your chance to find your son again. Who knows? A wise person is prepared for anything. But I don't know. Can he be alive after so long? I guess if there's a chance, I have to take it. First, let me go to my shrine and get Poji Bear. I don't know if Leo would remember him, but just in case. By all means, mind the pug bears. Retrieve Poji Bear from the shrine by your house. Okay, so now I gotta travel back through here. Now, luckily, leave me alone. Oh, jeez Louise. You are just a really angry, ugly dude, and your brother is over here just as angry and ugly as you are. Get away from me, you, you demonic pug bears. Uh, luckily for me, I don't think this was too far last time. I just gotta remember I'm looking for a red shrine. That's not a red shrine. Oh, here we go. And this kind of essentially ends the tutorial portion. Introduction to the story of the game itself. Once we're down below, that's where all the creepy surviving starts to happen. Oh, 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 oh. Too far off to the right again. Cool. Well, that didn't take too long. I was thinking that it was going to take the entire video to get to the tutorial, but luckily Slayer already has some information about it. It wasn't too bad. The temple stands empty. Don't you wonder? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, here we are with Poji Bear to find out what's really going on. Maybe. My pendant? What's happening? Alright. So presumably, whatever happened to our child, happened here too. Like, he was sent down here, teleported in some sort of weird way. And then, look at those dudes right there. These are like the townspeople around here. They're actually friendly. But look how creepy they look. Rock all around me. And above, as well. Am I underground? It sure looks like a swamp from the old picture books. Maybe there's someone around who can tell me where I am. Ah, uh, sure. Let's go ahead and uh, save here. Why not? In the future, you can save your progress by visiting a terminal. And now, we finally have some gameplay to undertake here. Quest log with Q, thank you. So, you could um, punch things. We'll make a weapon here shortly enough. But early on, you just going to want to go ahead and punch things and click on them to pick them up. We have a... a drear gatherer. You are not like us. How strange. A figment of the smoke. How will you survive the smoke time with no mask or lantern? This is what he's talking about over here, by the way. You should hurry and catch yourself a lantern fly. What? You don't even have a net? Have you lost the recipe? It's hard when the forgetting takes you. So we gotta make ourselves a stick net to catch a, a bug to keep away the smoke or whatever. We need a polyp tendril and sour tree branch. There's a really weird, like, whispering going on in the background, too. I like that. There, bring us a lantern fly quickly, and we'll set you right. Alright. Thank you. So, as you can see, they're actually not bad dudes. And right now, we don't have a weapon, but we're gonna definitely duke it out with Homeboy here. Or try to, anyway. Okay, you do your thing. By the way, you could use him to break stuff for you. It's actually kind of cool. Come over here. Yeah. <laughs> poke, poke, poke. Poke, 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 poke. Get those punches in there, buddy. Don't kill the lantern bugs. I need those for later. Ah, one more. Boom. So you see what I mean about the entire Don't Starve gameplay to it? I just, you know, I find it really similar to it anyway. And the art style reminds me a lot of Muramasa or Odin Sphere, which is from the same developer, I'm pretty sure. That's the. I mean, this game is not by them, 
But those two games that I compared it to are by the same developers. But the art style is very reminiscent of that. So now we'll collect a couple of random things. We need one more tendril. We still need the sour tree branches. I believe if I'm correct, you could actually acquire branches by... <laughs> knocking them off over here too. So those are the branches we needed. Now we got them. You can hit E to collect, but you can also just click on stuff too. For this, I think we might need a shovel of some kind. And I think these are ways to heal quickly, but they have like an expiration timer on them. Okay, now we just need, I believe, one more tendril to get up to the four needed. So I just gotta find one more of these scumbags over here. And we have to do this quickly because if the smoke comes and I don't have a lantern, we are gonna be in big trouble here. I'm not sure really sure what happens, but I can't imagine it being good. Okay. Launch them out. Launch them out. Boom. Yeah. I'm not sure if I have to click over and over or if I could just hold it down. I figure, I try to figure out if I wasn't like under the timer here with this thing. There we go. So, oh, we got, oh, we got a brain part this time too. Alrighty, so that should be it. Now, I believe we got to take him back to homeboy. So let's, uh, I think any of them will do. Yeah. Lantern flies are swift and spry. Good luck catching one. Oh, maybe I should craft this first, huh? <laughs> Sticking it. He, he asked me for the, uh, the, the bug, not the net itself. So hold left mount plus into craft. So this is our net. Luckily, there are bugs nearby. So get over here. Get over here, freaking bug. Gotcha. Help me. Is that a lantern fly in your pack? Perhaps there is hope yet. And luckily for us, we already had a glow fern husk, which is the other thing we needed, so we're good to go. Put it in a lantern and it will drive away the choking smoke. Mind the smoke ghost, for they'll try to snuff your light. But you really need a lantern if you plan to wander about. Okay, well I have that stuff already, which is not that, it's over here. And this, by the way, will burn off over time, so you do have to, like, at least early on in the game, catch more bugs and, you know, have extra backups. Because if you don't have them, and the smoke comes in, it, it ain't no good. I guess. Alrighty, I have it now. You have a lantern. Oh, what relief. It seems you've a lot to learn about survival, so here's a tip. We use recipe hides to train our youngsters to the toil. The recipes are written in secret ink that quickly fades. If you want to reveal them, rub the hides with a sour fruit juice. Now, we do have the sour fruit that we got from that one tree that we knocked down, or at least we beat down. But we have to find a cookpot to make this happen. I've marked the recipe hide on your map so you can try it. Alright. So, oh, we could show him items too. Because, you know, there's like a story involved here. So let's see about showing him Pochi Bear. A lost child. There is a feral child living not far from here. You'd need to cross the icy wasteland to the south to reach her. But dressed as you are, you would surely freeze to dead on the ice. You should consult the masters. They've been around recently. Here, I'll show you on your map where to find them. Alright. Now we know about the masters too. Who could those guys be? I guess we'll find out. He's a bone priest. Um, alright. So I don't think there is a, a cook pot around here, so we have to find one. Uh, I normally found one like off to the right over here, so... Um, he showed me the... Teleporter these. Oh, this is where the recipe is that we could learn. I believe that recipe teaches you how to make your first weapon. So we'll try to head there as soon as possible, but we also need to find a cook pot to make the juice first, so... Hopefully we stumbled into one. Oh, I saw something. Oh, cookpot! Why is there a cookpot here? Oh, good god, that's an angry, pissed off porcupine. Look, relax, Sonic, alright? I just want to cook. Um, and we need to make you here. Cool, so we have what we need now. There's a couple of extra items here, I'd like to acquire them. Just for crafting per- ah. You're too close, you're too close! Did you pick him up? I hope you picked him up. Alrighty, so... Down through here should be the Masters and All Soul. Oh, there's another Gatherer, or Dread Gatherer guy, or whatever they're called, over there, but we'll ignore him. So here's the hide. So for this guy... 
we should be able to just use the sour fruit juice on it if I'm right. Apply. Oh no, it wasn't for the weapon. It was to make the fur jerkin, which I guess we'll need if we're going to travel through the cold. Now the guy mentioned a girl, and we know that our, our boy was obviously, our son was a boy. That we are aware of. So it's probably not who was, that's not the person we're looking for, but I guess that's where we learn more information about stuff. So, yeah. Not sure. I guess we could probably get the hog hide from killing Mr. Pissed Off Sonic. Moss Tuff is just collectibles around here. Bone, maybe by also killing the, the Sonic dude as well, I imagine. Not really sure. What? An overworld here? Marduk, you idiot. Did you leave the teleporter controls unlocked? I did not, and I resent the assumption of negligence. I fail to see how this could have happened. You there! Sachi, is it? Return whence you came at once! Smoderk? Marduk? What are you doing here? What is this place? That is no concern of yours. You have no right to be here. It would be most dangerous for you to remain any longer. I can't go back. The machine is broken. Broken? Impossible. It has worked without fail for centuries. Ah, you deal with the rent with the wench, Marduk. I have other things to do. Ooh. Mystery, huh? Alright, so that is Smoke and Sacrifice, at least the introduction por portion of the game itself. I, I enjoy it thus far. I've done like a little bit more of the outside traveling, and as I mentioned, if you enjoy games like Don't Starve, at least the gameplay portion, you know, definitely enjoy the gameplay here. And the art style, I loved a lot, because I'm a really big fan of Muramasa, and you know, it's got a, a similar look to it at the very least, anyway. Um, it's available for PC, Switch, and other consoles, so I'll have all the information down below in case you want to pick it up for yourselves. I will catch you next time.